Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking not about any business analysis or any stock analysis. I want to talk about something that, you know, regarding the portfolio or regarding portfolio, at least what I do. So personally, I am someone, pers I am someone who has a very concentrated portfolio and I also have a, also have a, a good churn rate in my portfolio because I, uh, I do, I do target high pace of growth because I need, I need a business that can, you know, I, I, I traditionally look for businesses that, that has the capability of doubling their revenue in the next, in, in, in the three Yes. So these are the businesses that I, I target, right? So one of the things that happens is when you have this high concentration, when you are going behind this high pace of growth is, uh, there could be certain instances where the company might not execute what, what they tell. There could be some headwind, you know, generally a tailwind only can, can become a headwind and, and other things, right? So as a result, you, you end up you end up churning. So when I talk about churn here, there are three ways, right? How I churn in my portfolio, right? What are, what are the things that I look for? What are the cases that happens that makes me churn my portfolio? There are three things the first the first case is let's say now i like, like i told you i do have i i play a high concentrated bets now this is a personal decision that i do because if i do not have high concentration on in one business or in one stock what happens is i do not take that business very seriously so uh, what i mean by i don't take that business very seriously so when i know that is like more than like 10 percent of my money in in a particular business you know like you you're scared and that scariness only will make you learn more uh learn more about the business so that is one of the things and and i feel comfortable with that again it's a very personal decision. The, so what happens is, let's say I, I do have like above 15% allocation in one stock, which I do at times and I still do in, in some of my in some of my holdings. And I have a new opportunity coming up, right? Let's say I have an X opportunity coming up in my portfolio. Now, maybe what now maybe I'm in a situation where I want to play both, right? I want to play the X stock as well as the X business that I already have. And let's say the new opportunity that comes up the Y businesses and I might not have at that particular point of time, fresh funds, you know, I do not have money. And I at that time, I'll have to look in my portfolio okay, like where I need to churn so in that case there might be times where you know the higher allocation that is there, probably more than 20% or also allocation in that case what I would do I would trim that allocation down get it to probably if, if it's a whichever is the highest allocation maybe 50 to 20 or whatsoever I will trim that down I would probably like and then keep that shift that money from X stock to Y stock which is a new business opportunity so that is one way the way I do it the second way I do it is let's say uh, uh, again right uh, like I told you one of the one of the one of my investment the way I look at it is see I buy businesses with the intention of holding for long term obviously but having said that situation changes things change around you the dynamics change the same uh, you know the tailwind can become a headwind right and things can go for a toss right management can come and tell one thing but they might not be able to execute it also so there are so many things that can happen who knows when IT rate can come and boom all of a sudden there is no option but you know there is some uh, you know there is so much corporate governance issue happening you'll have to exit the stock in that case again that is the second case scenario where when shit goes wrong I will obviously like change I mean, I will take that money and shift it to another, another, another businesses. And since I do this full time, you know, I always have pockets of opportunity, right? I always know where I can, I can, I can shift my money. The third thing is, let's say I do, I do not, uh, I, let's say whatever, uh, whatever stocks I hold in my portfolio, everything is doing well, right? You will see like revenue growth is there, operating leverage is there, EPS growth is there, ROE is also going in an upward direction. Everything is great. Everything is fantastic. Tailwind is there, management guidance is there, all, all and all is there. And I still have a new opportunity come up, right? In that case, what I would do is I ask myself like right now, which is the business that I have the least conviction in, in terms of uh, least conviction in or, or I'm not comfortable holding. Just to give you an example, of course, if you're, I mean, uh, what I mean by conviction here is, of course, right, if you're making such concentrated bets, conviction becomes the most important. What I mean here in this specific case, conviction is, uh, I'll give you an example. Please don't take this as a buy or sell recommendation. So I did hold Preeti International Limited. I think I bought it in uh, by the end of Q1 results, right? Q1 FI24 results, I, I bought it and the company was performing well, right? Uh, so between the Q2 and Q3 result, there was another company that came. I've been tracking that company for quite a, quite some time and it has been walking the talk and I wanted to enter that company, right? And it had fantastic volume growth, right? And on one side, I have Preeti. I was never, I will never be able to increase my allocation here. So this is, there are some stocks where, you know, uh, I, I cannot have allocation here. This was one such stock where I can't have allocation where more than 5%. I had 5% allocation in Preeti because I was never comfortable. Uh, I, I mean, see, first of all, I'm playing concentrated bet, such huge bets I play. I 
can't i can't stand a chance of losing uh, losing a lot right so here the problem with preeti was it's not that i didn't have i didn't have uh, i didn't understand the business model kya hai bech the furniture bech the right ultimately but there was lack of information right and i mean you do not know ki like isme kitna uh, kitna b2b hai iska kitna b2c hai agar ye international mein karta hai to white label karta hai ya kya karta hai ya gross margins kitna hai iska or even you know, i mean uh, why even if so why i think they were doing i think they hardly had 6 to 5 uh, stores they had stores maybe q uh, q44 stores q coco stores there were so many doubts there were, i mean there was there was lack of clarity basically i would say not conviction but there's lack of clarity in the business and because of that i will never take such businesses more than 5% like i i might be interested to play it but also not confident enough to take that business try then in that case so this new business that i wanted to add in my portfolio i, I already had 10% allocation but i wanted to take it up i wanted to take it up to 15% in that case what i did i just had to be intellectually honest with myself and tell ke like bye you know this is not worth it kyunki kyunki in this in uh, preeti mein there is no con call there is no guidance ek quarter acha karega dusra quarter tatti karega and god knows what oh, why tatti bhi karega god knows why acha bhi karega god knows on the other hand i have a new business where it is doing con call management ka guidance hai management is walking the talk and everything so of course it only made uh, logical sense to shift that money from here to there so these are the three ways more or less the three ways that i look for churning right uh, i look for churning and the other way is i would say is there is opportunity cost in the sense ki like you know uh, yeah opportunity cost is here only like i was telling between preeti and the new business that i had preeti all that was in uh, i wouldn't say great but okayish business but what happens is since it is not since it was also high growth business so it was growing i think revenues at i think not the 40% right so it the problem wasn't about uh, the problem comes here too if i have a business and b business let's say one is coming at 30% and the other other one is growing at 40% and both are clearing my checklist then i would obviously choose b and the second thing is of course where it a lack of information lack of clarity and i do not feel confident right so that is when also i would i would like prefer shifting so these are the ways i do churning now here when it comes to churning right i think a lot of people look at churning as as a bad thing i don't believe it because as long as if you continue to hold good businesses performing businesses it continues to generate money you hold businesses that that don't perform well it 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 i mean you're not going to make any money either now when it comes to churning i think one of the biases that a lot of people have or at least i, I see I, and i did once upon a time very long ago i would tell you is they they churn based on one thing and one thing only and that is stock price now what i mean by this is let's say let's say like i told you you have a new business opportunity come up right let the same situation i'll give you right and you you know that all the business in your portfolio are doing well right from a to b whatever it is you're do, you're doing well but and you have to churn somewhere so what you look at that time sirf aap ek hi ek hi ek hi ek hi thing ko dekhoge that is the stock price right you will see ke like are maine to again just giving you an example aap aap kahoge ke like are maine to a stock liya ke like wo to mera buying price se upar hai b stock liya upar hai par c ka stock c c stock is less than my buying buying price c stock is less than my buy price to isme to kuch gadbad hoga now that c stock could be less than your buy price could be because of basic market volatility also you don't know right because again until and unless some negative update doesn't come up there can there can't be anything wrong in the business so that right so people churning only because of that or or they can just day change like aaj to aaj like they might see ki like uh, a, a stock you know is 2% up today b stock is 0.5% up or xc ka stock hoga jo 0.5% down so churn from c to a new opportunity let's say x or y if you continue to do this if you are going to churn based only on only one thing that is on stock price or the day changes in the stock price that happens or from your whatever the buy price is without understanding the business model without understanding what the outlook of the business is what the management guidance is or anything without doing any of the basic work if you churn only on only on based of that then you are bound to lose money what happens is one you're going to churn based on stock price the second thing is aapko aap ye fomo mein kar rahe ho like for example let's say aap ek bl again i'll just uh, uh, let's say you're holding a b stock right and you want to enter the c stock par na aap to dairy kar diya aapne bola ki like are yaar abhi fund nahi hai mujhe churn bhi nahi karna hai and then you'll see this c stock has gone from like 3000 to like i don't know 4000 or something right and aapke paas ye fomo ho jayega then you'll be like are ye ye uh, and then you'll be like are a stock to aaj to niche hai isse mein wahan pe change karte ho let me go to another uh, x or y stock and then what happens when you go to the new stock probably wahan pe thoda volatility aa gaya hoga and again you will move from there to 
to back to here right so in this method of churning where you're just churning on fomo or where you're just churning on stock price what happens you're bound to lose money whereas someone like me who has probably a logic probably who has a thesis and and who's churning based you know when when you buy and your thesis is broken based on that or based on opportunity cost i for that instance can make money on that same stock because i hold it i make sure that you know my thesis is going right and i and i exit when my thesis is not going and someone is doing it based on this and someone else is doing based on the stock price for the same business a person a can be making money and a person b can be losing money so when you churn make sure you are getting whenever and not just if you're not churning or not right the question comes here is this whenever you buy something make sure you write down your why make sure you note it down somewhere or you know very strongly why you're buying the stock so when shit hits a roof when shit goes south you know you know what you have to do so you know when your thesis becomes your antithesis you can sell right that is very very important i a lot of people ask like when do you sell a stock you sell a stock when your thesis go wrong you sell a stock you know when you find a new opportunity where you know the cost when you look at the opportunity cost the the other new opportunity is is at a way better price so the, these are the things that you can look for or you can do and this is what i do and uh, yeah that's that <laughs>